So in this video we're going to be looking at doing the same thing but now at constant pressure instead of constant volume. And the trick here is we're going to use H, which is sort of a thermodynamic function that's meant for constant pressure, right? It's equal to the, the heat at constant pressure um, instead of U. Um, and you'll derive a, an expression similar to the one we saw the last time. dH is equal to TDS plus VDP. This comes from the definition of, of uh, H and using that the same expression we had previously uh, for, for DU. Um, you'll derive this in your homework, so this isn't just come, coming out of thin air. Um, but similar to what we did with U, we can write out the total differential of H just based on the mathematical definition of the total differential. If we consider H a function of pressure and temperature, we'll have dH dP constant T dP plus dH dT at constant P dT. And again, we're going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to solve for dS in this expression here and set it equal to all these, right, set these two expressions equal to each other. Solve for dS uh, and, and write out the total differential of dS. Uh, again, it's a function of temperature and pressure this time instead of volume because we're considering a constant volume process. All right, so that will give us, I'll just skip a little bit of the algebra here, but it's exactly the same as it was for the du case. ds is equal to dh dt at constant p times 1 over t dt, just making sure I'm getting all my partial derivatives correct, plus 1 over t times dh dp constant t minus the volume times dp. All right, and then we write out the total differential of, of S. Um, right, S is a function of temperature and pressure. dS is equal to dS dT at constant P dT plus dS dP at constant T dP. And similar to what we did with the internal energy version of this, we have a part here that's equal to this partial derivative here, and we have this part here that's equal to this partial derivative here. Uh, again, we're just interested in the one in red. Um, the other one's you know, not as useful, um, particularly because it gives us a nice relationship here that dS dt, a constant p, is equal to dH dt at constant p divided by temperature. And again, this is this has a definition here, right? The change in enthalpy with respect to temperature, constant pressure, this is what we define as the constant pressure heat capacity. Again, similar to the constant volume heat capacity, this has a temperature dependence. This is not actually constant, uh, especially over wide temperature ranges. Um, but this, again, gives us a way to calculate changes in entropy under a constant pressure. And constant pressure is something that is much easier for us to achieve experimentally. And so in practice, what we would need to do is we would need to measure the heat capacity as a function of temperature, and then we can integrate this. So we can integrate dS dt at constant p, sorry, not dp, dt, because these, these need a match down here. Integrate from T1 to T2. This is analogous to what we had before. So S at T2 minus S at T1 is equal to the integral. We can make the substitution here that this is Cp. As a, again, emphasizing that this is not constant. So we, we need to define that Cp has a temperature dependence, and we need to measure that. That's the measurement we need to make is what's the constant pressure heat capacity as a function of temperature. Now, let's consider a specific case. What if T1 is equal to 0 Kelvin? Uh, in that case, we would get S at T2 minus S at 0 Kelvin. Um, and then we can still do this integral. 
but the question is, what is this value here? And that's where the third law of thermodynamics is coming to come in, and we'll look at that in the next video.